you know, that's such an important point that you're making um, about people having to hide these aspects of their identity uh, in certain professions. And um, it's interesting because even throughout this week, I what I have experienced a number of times is those who are seeking to be allies, um, some, not all, but some have come into the spaces and as soon as they're noticed, they disappear. Almost as if they're afraid and I don't know what they're afraid of. I don't know, are they afraid that people are gonna see them and think that they too are neurodivergent? Oh, the shame of that, oh dear. The, the horrible, horrible affliction that would be. Um, you know, so I don't know if that's what it is or I don't know if it's they're uncomfortable because um, they feel like they really don't know enough to contribute to the dialogue and and are feeling you know a bit nervous about being brought up into a twitter space let's say if they if they've never done that before many of us have connected through twitter spaces so it's become um you know a little bit more natural which is ironic that here we are speaking publicly when we're the ones that have communication problems right um so it's it's really fascinating but if if, if people who are seeking to be allies are, are having to disappear and hide in these spaces. When we're actually autistic or otherwise neurodivergent people, um, just imagine. And then when you add on the, the layers of, you know, uh, you know, those who are racialized, the black indigenous uh, people of color um, and, and, you know, any marginalized groups certainly are transgender um, population without a doubt. So. I don't know. I, I just, um, I just, I'm just fascinated by the, the direction that this work can take us and really motivate us because it's giving us a framework, right? And even though none, none of us necessarily like a framework because our minds go in very different and unique ways, um, it, it's planting seeds. Um, you know what? Let me let me ask this, and then I'm going to look to see if there's questions from the Twitter space what what brought you to like how did it come about that you started thinking about these things like was there something that that you were studying that was interesting that led you here was it a mm -hmm. did you just have a moment where you thought oh you know like how did it all happen um does this relate to the autistic collaboration website and what we are now doing via that okay well this was a, a very organic development. So um, mm -hmm. I've always, um, well, I'm not competitive, never was. And going back all the way to my childhood, when I sort of enjoyed tutoring other children and, and, and just noticing how much this actually improved my own understanding. Um, and then later, well, I ended up working in consulting and consultants have a very bad reputation for very good reason because many of them are highly arrogant and, and so I always uh, yeah was the sort of very unusual consultant uh, focusing on collaboration getting <laughs> catalyzing collaborations between people removing misunderstandings and uh, getting people to actually work together and achieve things together and that's always been then then offended uh, competitive people in that space so and I didn't last long in the traditional sphere of employment. So 20 years ago, I then created a, a well, what I ho hoped would be a, become a good company. And I think we, we've achieved that. But then even when, when you then uh, interact with clients and, and customers out there, you are again exposed to this market environment, to this bizarre sort of suspicion, distrust, competition, um, the ritual of going through bizarrely biased RP processes. Um, and I noticed that it's always the, well, the autistic people around us and we know how to collaborate and it's the rest of society that seems to be disabled when it comes to collaboration at eye level. And so the, and then reading about this, this widely spread myth that we are supposed to be bad at teamwork. I mean, so yeah, the, the whole website started with this sort of annoyance saying, 
no this is right. the opposite is true we are actually we are the ultimate collaborators here the ultimate people mm -hmm. who actually know how to build nurture and maintain trusted relationships and then just get things done you know regardless as to whether there's any sort of financial award or not i mean that uh, right. is, is usually last thing on our minds and yeah. so that's how it started and and then i think it's and it's yeah it's been wonderful so with I think the pandemic especially has catalyzed mm -hmm. further activities. And now it's, yeah, if people want to help, all help is appreciated because it's, I think there's more and more projects that are emerging and we need people to uh, coordinate and to um, also connect people, compatible people. So, mm -hmm. uh, and there's immense interest in, in this work on uh, autistic trauma peer support. We are now very starting to document how we see this becoming a reality. And, and then we need uh, yeah, support in actually making this happening. But again, with the right kind of people um, who are trustworthy and prepared to put in the effort there. So this is, uh, yeah, uh, I guess, if you want to contribute, the, the doors are open. And it's if, if you have new ideas for services, by all means, I mean, we are we just want to, the, the website ends up being an index. And um, mm -hmm. there, there's no single point of control of whatsoever. The key thing is that around every service, the, the, the design and then the operations, that needs to be run by an autonomous team. Um, so, mm -hmm. and you can conceptualize the whole thing as, yeah, this growing index of collaborations. And if we can maintain a trustworthy index of these things, then uh, I think we are making the impossible possible. So do you suggest then those folks who are autistic, whether diagnosed or not, um, that, that they um, certainly check out the, the uh, um, Autistic Collaboration Trust, the AutoCollab um, website, and I know you have the Twitter handle as well. Um, and then, uh, like, are the people that are listed, um, are, do they, should they reach out to you, like, by Twitter? What's your best way? What do you prefer? How do you prefer um, they reach out to you? Yeah, we've, on, on the website, we've got contact forms uh, yep. for participating, and, and that way uh, we can then yeah, coordinate responses to this and we can um, provide people with background. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it's really great to, to see this interest here in, in well, what we have been discussing here and in this new dementia concept in the autistic final concept, because mm -hmm. those, what we are trying to do there is to document useful first principles that people can mm -hmm. use to, well, get together and form these tight-knit groups that can get things done. And mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. experience has been that the way autistic people are successful at doing this is using first principles that are radically different from what you would learn, for example, in, I don't know, a business school, right? Or right. even in some uh, social entrepreneurship course, right? Uh, as sure. to how you would run a charity or something. It's, it's different. And mm -hmm. so we just want to pass on, on basically an open source. You know, we've got all these designs out there just here. And by focusing on first principles, you can actually, I encourage people to implement these principles within their local context, right? And to mm -hmm. add to this as needed, but keep it as simple mm -hmm. as, as possible. And then just do your thing and see how, how the collaboration emerges. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we try to be a place of peer support. So then if people run into barriers, questions, yeah, then we let's learn from each other. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's what I see standing out about, um, you know, what's happening. Uh, I mean, certainly Kai and the team at Autistics Unmasked are, are, are trying to like, they've got members that are like from all over the States. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that they've got beyond the States too, right, Kai? Um, you, do you want to elaborate on how you're set up? We are mostly, uh, so we're, we're stationed, I guess, um, based in Boston. I say stationed, but I'm not yeah. an ex-military brat, so <laughs> that's where that comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my father is the army. But, um, we're based in Boston, um, so some of our um, team, Hall and Reed, 
included in our research team, um, she's overseas. And we did previously have a couple more people overseas, so they've um, you know, kind of come and gone. And sometimes these things happen with volunteer um, yeah. organizations. But yeah. we do have, um, like, we are able to have reach overseas, mm -hmm. um, even though we are uh, based in Boston. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's that's what what I think I've been noticing about. Um, it's not to say anything negative about like earlier uh, advocacy groups. It's just that sustainability has to be um, built into the the you know non hierarchical structure. If you, you if you don't have sustainability, then you're not going to people are going to just burn out, right? You have to have those people that you can rely on and even just in the last two days and yes like we're exhausted many of us I'm certainly exhausted but you know when something like I I, I was reaching out to people to say you know can you do this can you do that um, and they were just like hop in right um, or or they'd be reaching out to see like how I'm doing or or how so and so's doing or you know and these are people that like we're just meeting but but we but we get it we get under we, we understand um some of the complexities about uh, living life in a society that thinks we're broken which is to take it from the the title of our our space the other day um and and that's that's what i think is so neat about groups like yours and kai's and you know um any that are up and coming and and i think you know the the nine is operating similarly to that and i know um, it's a little different because it's kind of educators, but uh, like I said to Maddie and, and a bunch of people the other night, um, I see, and I think most of us see everybody as educators. You know, if anybody who's taking responsibility for making things sustainable, making things better for the next people that come after us, making things better for each other, right? Like when, I mean, I think of somebody like Pastiche Graham, young person and is every day out there on social media saying, I love you all. You are amazing. Don't ever forget it. Like that's that, that is part of being an educator and taking care of community. Everybody has a, a role that, that, that I think we have to really um, appreciate and, and, and celebrate and, and, um, and value and, um, I, I when I saw the panels that you were putting together, the global panels, which continue, and how what are the intervals at which you put those out now? Is it is it a regular time when you release those, Sean? Um, no, these the panels are well. They they've also evolved organically. So it started with um, this um, campaign to um, ban all forms of conversion therapies and I think I mean you've been part of uh, one of these mm -hmm. more recent panels and you can see that the this is now shifting you know beyond what the, the scope is getting broader it's it's I just um yeah there's a lot of value in in artistic uh, activists coming together who are working on complementary kind of projects so it, it's mm -hmm. It's a form of yeah bi-directional learning, right? Um, and Absolutely. knowledge sharing. And and actually just this, this composition of the panel that we had the other day with um, Quinn and mm -hmm. with uh, the people from Landmark College. Landmark. I, I, yeah, I um, want to, I'm already thinking about sending an email to all of you um, because I think there are further panels that we can have with that group specifically about um, yeah, education, um, how yeah. that needs to change. And then also uh, what the challenges are in then creating, allowing autistic people and autistic final, autistic communities to emerge and thrive in this world because currently our world is not set up for that right so That's right. Yeah. we've got an education system that has entirely different objectives and um so i want to talk more about these very fundamentals and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. with the, with a view of how do we communicate this to the outside world what our collective needs are so that uh, this can actually change and evolve mm -hmm. Um, but, that, but that's that yeah go ahead i mean th th that's one example um and uh i think if 
people, well, it, it, these panels will always, I think, come out of specific projects that we're doing. And if there's, if the interest is um, starting to rise on a specific project or a service, mm -hmm. then it makes sense to have these panels because we need to co-create these things so that they actually work for the people mm -hmm. who are interested in them. And mm -hmm. these panels are part, I think, of, of that design process and then learning process on an ongoing basis. So yeah, we, mm -hmm. we always have these types of panels. And if you ask me where this is heading, I suspect this is going to be centered around projects and remember the ban aba thing yeah well, that's more a campaign than a project but uh, it's sure it's a theme and there's people who are deeply involved in this you know mm -hmm. wonderful domain experts who've been in that space for often decades like like tanya for example right yeah um, and yes we need to uh yeah center that domain expertise in all these different areas yeah, and, and I mean, for those that are not familiar with the panels that we're talking about on the OtCollab uh, site, um, there, it basically, it, it's, it's, the, um, it's a global campaign, global panels uh, that are basically fighting against all forms of conversion therapy, um, and with ABA being considered one of those. And recently, Canada did outlaw gay conversion therapy, um, all forms of conversion therapy, but I don't think their connection, they're making the connection the way that, that we are. And so, um, the, right? Yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. They're, 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 I agree, they're not. And so um, for, for the first time, to my knowledge, um, autistic-led uh, advocacy groups um, were, were speaking at the Senate committee uh, just a few nights ago. Did, they did an amazing job, Anne and, and Vivian, and um, I did invite them to come and sort of connect with us but are they're both you know super um tied up right now with everything that's been going on and um certainly we'll be collaborating and, and i'm sure connecting with them very soon um because that's the kind of like when we think about i mean the top of this the topic of the space is like next steps for this world right this real world and it's if we're looking at what does change look like and how do we make it happen um we have to have a strategic plan and we have to, this is why the panels are so important, because anybody who is wondering, if, if, if I'm a parent of a newly diagnosed child, and I'm wondering, I'm on the, I'm waving, wavering, right? Like, do I, do I do this or not? One person draws you to the Autistic Collaboration Trust Global Panels, watch this, and they will hear from people who, you know, have the, we talk about evidence-based stuff, there's lots of evidence out there that, that you are collecting. And um, there, I, I think too often people look for data in number sets. Data is also very powerful in anecdotal sets. And, and it's not like there's only five people that are saying this, right? People all around the world are saying the same thing. So, if we're doing more harm than good, why on earth would we persist, right? It makes absolutely no sense to try to, you know, force the autistic brain out of the autistic. It makes no sense. It's just, it's just awful. Mm -hmm. um, so just so, just so those who are in back uh, joining us in the space, um, we have a three-way, um, uh, well, three modes of, of uh, communication going on right now. We have a Twitter space going on. We have um, a Zoom call uh, that's being uh, with Jorn Betten, um, the founder of Autistic Collaboration Trust and someone who many of us really uh, admire so much for this amazing work that you're doing um, to bring people together and, and have this diversity of resources, this, this bank of resources, ideas, um, books I know that, that, you're, that you're creating and putting there. Um, and you know, always open to collaborate because it's all about collaborating to move us forward. And uh, and we're also live streaming that to our uh, YouTube channel, uh, which is um, the Neurodivergent Affinity Network of Educators. And this is um, the second last space for the Intersectional Infinity Summit. But I use that word cautiously because it's really not the end. Uh, it's just the beginning. We've been in a week of immersive. Um, summit going strong all week 
Um, I, I told some people, uh, I, I didn't actually go to bed last night. I tried, and I've never, I haven't done that in years. It's terrible, I know. So um, I'm, I'm on pretty much no sleep because it's just what happens sometimes when you're kind of go, go, going. And I got into a state of a flow. I was totally in a flow state totally in a flow state and I we finished up a green it was uh, me a real green horse and Maddie just chatting last night after a space and I, I and I'm, it's not to say I'm not sharing just before the heck of it I'm just saying like when we get going and when we're in that zone like there is no stopping us and so yes I will crash tomorrow I know that but I'm okay with that I'm reserving the day to just you know right just to check out I'll hopefully go outside and get some vitamin d i i had to i had to get a week of, of uv and before we came before we came to the summit before we did the summit so um but uh anyway so i just want to have a look at the space and and throw it out to anybody there um that's that's joined us uh i don't know if anyone has any um reflections or thoughts uh in terms of you know, next steps for the real world or, or something else you want to, you know, wonderings that you have that maybe, um, you know, we can throw out there. And, and, and like I said, Yorn is with us here. Um, and, um, you know, however you're joining us, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, and I'm wondering, um, let's see, could, um, if, if you're, if you're able to, my most wonderful nine friend, um, Jacqueline, if, if you're able, can you have a tiny look at the YouTube channel or maybe Lulu, um, if possible, um, because I just want to make sure that there's no messages there. I, my iPad just died on me, so I can't actually see it. And I don't want to, um, mess up the, um, the streaming that's going on on my computer. Thank you. Oh, we see hands. Okay. Kai. Oops. Go ahead. Hey. Earlier, when, when Maddie was showing us um, you know, the light up of the bridge, and Karen, you had made a little joke about it. I feel like I'm on um, the news anchor. And yeah. Like, you know, that's over to you, Maddie. And mm -hmm. I'm watching um, as I'm in the space and watching the live stream of it. And it did kind of resemble, um, you know, with Joran on, on yep. uh, the panel there, and then Maddie, you know, going over to, to his stream. Yep. It did kind of resemble. Um, a, like you know the news broadcast yep. that kind of gave me the idea of um you know i don't know if it's something that he was going to take on or maybe just as all of us being you know partners by yep. um the autistic collaboration trust and just any other organization that we're partnering with and, and as well as yep. um just like individuals who are partnering with us outside of organizations uh -huh, uh -huh. um if they just get some sort of like autistic brand little news station yeah. and kind of you know keep going um, especially through April and, you know, the rest of the year, and just mm -hmm. all of every year, yeah. have these similar sort of um, live stream yeah. events that, you know, resemble kind of the um, the format of a news broadcast and have whatever's going on at AU, whatever's yeah. going on, um, you know, politically with, with autistic, uh, the autistic community, whatever's going on with not just like anything yeah. involving the autistic community, um, having some sort of, you know, like a, a spokesperson from each organization or Absolutely. individuals and just kind of run it like a news, you know, channel through yeah. maybe YouTube or something of that nature. I just think it's yeah. so cool yeah. um, because, well, one, um, news stations were a special interest of mine when I was younger. I was um, trying to emulate the anchor voice that I still, that I still tend to do sometimes. Um, but even still, I just think it would be really cool. It would be a way to kind of, um, you know, a slightly different format from the panels that we've been having, a slightly different format yep. from the spaces, but still in a way for us to connect with our community. Um, and then I'm um, getting a message from one of my, <laughs> from our strategist at AU. Um, yep. if, you'll, if you're okay, I'd like to read that to the space, but um, not before you give me the go ahead. I, have, I, didn't read, I didn't see the whole thing, so oh, just let me know. Um, yeah, well, yeah. Just, just simply, yeah. To, I, I feel like this would be a great way to continue on with, um, I guess, keeping each other in the loop. You know, emails are yeah. great and everything, but yeah. this is like, I, I see this with a broader reach. I see this with, yeah. um, you know, being able to um, reach people outside of this, this community that we've started to cultivate through Twitter and through the Zoom yeah. calls and everything. Oh, yeah. I'm going to read what, um, what Eel said. So mm -hmm. he said, oh, so for those of you who don't know, um, 
Emerge is something that AU has been working on. It's kind of like a, a branch off um, resource for housing, uh, job placement, things like that. It's a whole thing, so I, I won't get into it. But um, Eel is our strategist, and he's saying, I have an autistic news source on my list for Emerge. I'm so excited about what you're saying in space right now. Yep. Long term, I think we could develop something real that isn't uh, that isn't beholden to capitalism for the news. So yeah, yeah I think that I think that would be great. And I definitely trust Eel um, leading, leading the charge on that for um, mm -hmm. for AU's purposes and for Emerge's purposes. But um, if we could get something going sooner than that, even I don't know how long it would take Eel to do. Um, you know, to, to kind of organize something like that, but I'm just like, wheels are turning, and I'm like, how can we keep the energy going? Like, how can we continue to do this and keep each other in the loop and stay up to date and, and include information about, you know, these, um, these uh, you know, Stop the Shock and things like that, like all these different hashtags that are circulating yes. in the community. I yeah. think this would just be a fantastic way of doing that. And before I repeat yeah. myself anymore, <laughs> I will, as yeah. Karen says, feel the mic back. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's 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 interesting because um, just because there are young advocates out there doesn't mean that we can't learn as much from them as we can from those who have been around for many years. And I think we need to learn from each other. And um, I, I go back to um, something that uh, I know Aiden Lee, I've mentioned his name before, and um, Aiden is uh, a young man who not only is he a, a, an amazing painter um, a, a, and, a, you know, he keeps... Oh, oh my gosh, I was making, I was muted, I was muted, oh my gosh, ah, Yorn heard me, that, that could be it, that the data is report is really revealing that, Kai, you're absolutely right, um, I've done that twice today, so it, it's, it's okay, the preamble was essentially that, you know, we have to learn from young advocates as well as those who have been around for a long while. And um, Aiden Lee, who I, I've mentioned before, who, who helped us out with, uh, he did a podcast, he, he podcasted, um, um, he met with uh, Ayanna Davis, phenomenally aut autistic, uh, and he also did the um, art night the other night. And um, he, he works with a, a team of, of young men and they put on this just like Youth Connect, they do this great podcast. And I'm not suggesting we do that necessarily, but um, they inspired me to think like, how could we do something like that? And so it's interesting that this has evolved organically through this as a, I, I almost see it um, like, you know, kind of like what you were saying, Kai, where people from all over are coming together, but we're not gonna have a behind closed doors meeting. It would be, uh, you know, like live stream, people are watching it. And that's how we get um, allies, active allies watching, listening, because there would be talk of ABA, there would be talk of Rottenberg, there would be talk of, you know, all of these things. And it wouldn't just be a, well, what do you mean you don't light it up blue? I don't understand. Tell me. Because I think part of why I get so exhausted, and I, I, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I think I think the data speaks for itself. Um, we're constantly having to explain why. Like I can't, I can't, I, the number of times that I've had to explain why not blue, why not puzzle pieces. And that's why it, and it's, we know we anticipate it before April, but when April comes, like, it's like you wanna just press play on the old fashioned tape recorder, right? Because it's just nonstop. Um, so I, I really think that this is, this is something that we need to explore. And um, if that's what comes out of this, where we have multiple, uh, and they don't have to really quote unquote organizations, right? It could just be that we have almost like non-hierarchical delegates. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, we've already got people that are connecting in this way um, and we'd all be connected just further and we would strategically schedule you know, ahead of time so that we don't just like leave it because some of us will get these fantastic lofty ideas. If we don't schedule it um, to, to come back and then, you know, um, do what we're going to do, even if it's a five minute check-in, it's better than, than just leaving it be, right? Um, so yeah, okay. So there's, that's definitely a good, um, a good next step. I see a hand up first from, 
Um, Maria, Maria Silverheart, it looks like. Go ahead, Maria. Hi, um, hi there. Um, am I audible? You are. You're good to go. Awesome. Thank you. Karen, I saw you this morning in Kevin's space, and I've been following him and uh, on autism, and um, I'm just really grateful for these spaces. Um, I'm a community builder in tech and open source, and what I heard, uh, you had someone, a gentleman, speaking through your account. I don't know who that is, but um, I just wanted to ask some questions about, you know, who these people are because I wanted to connect. Um, I'm a community builder in like tech and open source, but on, you know, fun fact about me is that I am a registered behavioral therapist for the last four years. I've been working with autistic students and teaching them how to code. And I've learned so much today, just today being in like different spaces and things like that about the things that I just didn't know about that's going on in the communities uh, with um, this space. And so I just really want to get on this side where, um, they, where we're creating an environment for uh, these talented folks to be able to have um, an outlet. And I, so when I came in, I was just coming in at the time that uh, the Green Horse um, sorry, the real green, green, real green horse was talking about how corporate doesn't, or you know, the like working environment, it does not, it's not collaborative and it's competitive. And that's, uh, I get a lot of people that come to me um, that are afraid of talking about their abilities or that their, their, you know, their sensitivities or and whatnot because the the environments are not helpful for them and the environments are toxic and so they're. Mm -hmm more toxic environments and um the kind of like get the work done and just get get going forward can't really happen because of some of the toxicity of these environments so um i would just definitely love to help and collaborate and uh, connect with those that are um uh along the along in alignment with what you're talking about so I just wanted to ask, this. I want to say thank you first. Thank you for all of like the information I've been learning and everything like this. And um, also have to connect with some of the other folks that I've heard you, that heard, I've heard coming through your account. Sure, yeah. So um, so Jorn Batten is um, the founder of the, the uh, Acoustic Collaboration Trust. So um, uh, that's certainly a, a site that you'll, you would want to look at. Um, I think you know it's it's important for us to have uh, those who are seeking to be allies. And it sounds like you know uh, there was maybe a, a turning point for you today, which is great because we need more turning points to happen. Um, and uh, it's 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 interesting. And uh, in these spaces, we're open and transparent. And my my um, I'll, I'm gonna just be I'll really be revealed to you that. Um, when the word behavioral therapist came out, I literally had a guttural response. Like I literally felt sick because um, that just the the work that we're doing. And this is no to not not be you know for you to take offense. That's not what I'm trying to do. It's just that that so much of um, what's going on right now and the controversy has to do with uh, like a behaviorist approach. And so. Uh, when 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 we're connecting with people who are in these roles and trying to figure out new ways, those neuroaffirmative ways, and you know, digging into you know places, resources like the Therapist Neurodiversity Collective, um, and you know, looking up and what is neuroaffirmative practice, and how do you be, uh, how can you be a human rights and trauma informed educator and um, you know, because the, the layers of, of trauma and abuse that happen to our students and to clearly many of us who have grown up um, is is really um, the impetus for, for what needs, to, like for this change. So um, absolutely, we're happy to have you co-learning on this journey with us. And, uh, you know, if, if you like follow the folks that are in the, the group and for sure you can DM um, myself, I'm sure that, uh, you know, uh, Maddie and, uh, you know, if, if, if maybe you guys want to give a thumbs up if you want um, somebody to reach out to you, that's good. Sorry, my dog is totally distracting me. Um, with his nose. Well, thank you so much for that. 
thank you so much for explaining and these new terms that I'm learning mm -hmm. um, in these spaces. I really appreciate it because, um, you know, like I said, I just got involved uh, for many reasons, the people in my family or whatnot, and putting tech together to, you know, with autism and um, learning about this. Uh, it is has been a turning point, and I just, you know, kind of want to really be in a place to help. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think um, it's, it's tricky because uh, those of us who are in education, especially in places where um, applied behavioral analysis is still part of, um, you know, uh, legislation. And I'm not, it's not, it doesn't mean it's legislated and you're forced to do it. It means that it's in that list of things that are okay to do with autistics. And I think firmly the vast majority of us now um, are, are really trying to unite and say, yeah, there's really no form of ABA that's okay. Um, and I take, I said earlier today, and so I'll say it again today, because um, I've already said it, like I take my career um, very seriously, but I know I take it in my hand and, and you know, I, it, it's, it's at risk. It's, I, I'm somewhat protected because I am a government employee, um, but, you know, there are pressures on us to, um, you know, do what we're supposed to do. Uh, and speaking out against things that are still in legislation is risky. I'm not saying there's anybody out to get us or anything like that, but it, but it is, you know, when you stand out as the, the, the one person that is speaking out against this so-called evidence-based practice, it's very tricky. So um, I, I think, you know, if, if you are certainly looking to learn, um, you're in the right space as, as long as, as long as it's, um, it's not at all going to be us trying to figure out <laughs> any any uh, push for behaviors because I think we're past that, um, and we uh, we'll play nice as long as as long as we're not being traumatized when, when we're trying to play. So uh, certainly welcome here as as a co learner and thank you thank you for that and for sharing your experience today. It's great. April second was a turning point for you, so that's wonderful. A uh, real green horse. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. I just want to say it's not really a professional. I mean, I'm yeah. registered or whatever, but it's it's a side thing that I've done for years. Just yeah, so 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 great to learn. Yeah, and I really appreciate and I'm really idea. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you so much. And and just like to put this out there, I think many of us in education. I was saying this earlier today too. Like I was. Like I, I believed in behavior, not, not ABA, but I was a teacher who believed that behavior is communication and, you know, all of these things that you would hear because it was best practice. And we used token, you know, uh, sticker charts and, and all of those things. Um, and, uh, you know, when you dig deeper into those and you start to uh, realize that those things are not actually teaching little people uh, any sustainable skills. Um, they're really just teaching them to put their own needs aside. Um, and certainly there are different circumstances in every family, um, in every situation. Um, but a lot of those things that people see as harmless or people see as just regular sorts of interventions, uh, we have to peel back the layers as to what's actually going on um, in many cases, because often it's it, they're, 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 they go against uh, an autistic neurology that could be doing so much better if you just utilize specializations and flow state and, um, you know, normalizing stimming and sensory needs and, and balancing those. So I think um, there's got to be a shift. Um, and, uh, and I think that's a, a real big piece of it. Um, so I, I'm going to turn it over now to a real green horse. Go ahead. Hi, um, I've spoken about this in some other spaces, but if uh, people are wanting to learn about neurodivergency or uh, autism or just general mental health stuff, I'm not a professional, but I am autistic and I have lived experience and uh, lots of neurodivergent friends actually who struggle with conditions that I don't have. So just inadvertently, I've been exposed to a lot of the spectrum. But uh, in terms of like what's happening going forward, um, 
there's absolutely going to need to be an information arm and a political arm. Like yeah. this, this work that we're doing doesn't go anywhere if it doesn't get translated into advocacy work. Yes. And so. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, just keeping that in mind and keeping that framework, you know, steady as we're trying to work forward with all of this. Uh, just something that. Uh, <clears throat> Something that I wanted to talk about was the fact that uh, a lot of this history in mental health is uh, linked back to the person who invented ABA and gave inversion therapy. It was the same person, in, in case you were wondering. Yep. And uh, this person also had links to uh, Nazi eugenicist Germany. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, Mm -hmm. That's the reason why the word Asperger was removed from the DSM. It was offensive mm -hmm. to Jewish people and it was glorifying a Nazi eugenicist. So we, we don't use that term anymore. And uh, and thank you for uh, re reminding people about that because I think many of us in the community, since we so many of us have heard this so many times, we forget that some people this may be new to them and I'm guilty of that all the time. Um, Jorn, you sent a great um, overview, that kind of prehistory of autism when we were talking about that video. And um, I posted um, both the, so I can't remember what it's called because we joked, it was like, if you want the prehistory, um, but there's basically it's a, a chart that uh, goes through like the key players uh, and, and sort of moments in time when things kind of just went went wrong and then they just kept getting more wrong. Uh, and that includes things like, you know, Light Up Blue and, um, you know, uh, the, the, the people who defined um, autism and how it was, you know, tweaked and changed and criteria, you name it. It just goes through all those things. Um, I, I mean, Kieran Rose does an amazing training, which I, I've said since last fall when I did it. Uh, it's definitely highly recommended. Um, but, you know, the gist of the, the history session is on that chart. Um, that that Yorn's team has created, or probably Yorn. I'm I'm going to guess it was either you or Sarah that put that together. Um, but uh, and then I also um, uh, the the neat thing about being connected to different people around the world is I was looking for a a, a great uh, kind of uh, I didn't want to rewrite the history of autism because I know all of these pieces, but you know I I I didn't have just a, a catch one size you know, like a catch, one, a catch of all of them. And so I found this particular video and I reached out to Jorn and I said, I think I reached out to a few people, but Jorn got back to me straight away and, uh, you know, was watching it and saying, you know, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. So, you know, it's not perfect because there's uh, like a tiny bit of language that um, even though if the person's done it, they're autistic, uh, they, they might say like autistic people, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm a fan of saying, you know, many or a number of, so that that way we're not generalizing and perpetuating that it's like everybody does this or everybody does that because we all know that every autistic is unique. Um, but otherwise, you know, the history is there, the, 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 the turning points are there the reasons for political movement are, are there. And, and that is actually linked on the, um, the site. I wanna say it's on the summit site uh, on the resource page, I think. If not, it's on the nine website and I'll, I'll be putting it on both. Oh, yeah. I doubled it, okay, good. I thought they were really quite good. Thanks for checking, Maddie. Um, so yeah, so I just wanna throw that out there. Um, and uh, for those that are like, like that to me that those resources those those global panels um uh, you know the, that's why i created that massive toolkit last year or the year before because i was just wanting to have everything at my disposal because i was so exhausted trying to explain all these things i didn't want to have to go and start blogging and vlogging i just wanted to say like here's a checklist if you're trying to find books and to make sure that they would be vetted by the community. Here's a, um, you know, the history of autism. Here's a why we don't use the puzzle pieces. And there's a lot out there. 
Um, but vetting it is getting harder and harder because um, there are trolls out there and um, there are a, a lot of people in the autistic community, best of intentions, but um, they don't necessarily all have um, the, the, the depth of knowledge. And so there are some resources that are going to be a little more um, aligned with historical facts and the statistics and the data. And, and we want to be as authentic as we can, right? So, um, and true to, to the history books because we don't want to invalidate if, if we were being asked, for example, to go and be witnesses at the government or, or go and do a, a you know, political a speech somewhere, or we want to make sure we've got sort of that catch all that is um, the most appropriate and, um, and correctly, um, you know, resourced, uh, re referenced and such. So let's see. Um, oh, my gosh. I have. Oh, Justin. Go ahead. Yeah. Go on, Justin. Hello, um, as somebody who is on that uh, name of the parentship autistic uh, spectrum, um, it, it is uh, really great to uh, have a community where people are on that spectrum. And I, I know that, you know, it is uh, quite difficult to uh, have uh, people, uh, you know, be more acceptive of our, of our, you know, our community, and and I just feel like um, the, the hashtag is a you know autism awareness should be autism acceptance because I feel like that would be more better and because it feels like it's uh, something that uh, you know we need to do. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and to be accepted into our community. Um, as I feel like, or, you know, or just on, just on social media as well. I just feel like that would be more uh, beneficial. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. I think, I think, um, I mean, looking at who's in the space, um, uh, I think most of us are seeking autistic acceptance, even the word autism, and then even, we defer, um, I think generally our rule of thumb, and again, I'm not speaking for the whole community, but you know, um, deferring to a person's preference is, is I think first and foremost important uh, in terms of how they want to identify. But um, I know for me, I used to say on the spectrum because that was just kind of a term. And I now I don't use that. Now I just use autistic. Um, and there are people within the autistic community who will say they're autistic in their phase one or phase two, phase three. Uh, from my perspective, I don't, I don't like to do that because that, um, you know, it, it's, it, to me, it's, it's like you either are or you aren't autistic and, and support needs can change over time. And those levels are just, I think, uh, another way of, of talking about functioning labels. So, um, you know, it's interesting how the language changes over time. But that's something I think we have to, to look at and reflect on as a whole community and figure out what, what suits us best um, as individuals and, and, and the why behind our choices, right? Um, as we're shifting um, this movement forward. So um, I'm just looking at the time, Yarn, and I know um, uh, with time zones and, and, and everything, like we, we started at um, just after, I wanna say, was it four? So we've been at this for, yeah. Um, and I wanna respect your time. So certainly if you wanna stay in this space, by all means do, but um, you know, I think we've got some good starting points here that um, uh, I know you're always just a DM away, which is so fantastic mm -hmm. that we're able to do that. Um, and uh, it's hard to believe that we're at the end of the week. It's been quite something, it really has. And I can't thank you enough for all that you've done. And, and of course, please extend that to Sarah too. If you didn't catch Sarah's um, interview, um, Maddie interviewed Sarah the other day uh, and did such a, such a lovely job of just going over the important work that she's doing to um, just reiterate that message of how important the representation is and, and getting you know um, people to see themselves reflected 
uh, in, in a variety of ways. And as an educator, that's near and dear to my heart, but certainly anybody who's, you know, anybody who watches television can see like, where, where are we out there? We're nowhere. And if we are, we're not played by us. So like, that's, that's right. It's ridiculous. It really is. So um, Yorn, what's, what are your thoughts? Would you, do you want to stick around for a few minutes or do you want to, do you want to give us some th closing thoughts before you go? Um, yeah, just been uh, wonderful uh, to see all the amazing work that you've put into this whole summit. And, and as you've uh, said uh, just earlier, I mean, you are obviously in flow mode and hyper-focus mode, so <laughs> I, I can see all that energy. It's, it's uh, so much um, appreciated. And um, yeah, I, I'm enjoying this um, immensely. Um, I also send you a short uh, bio for uh, UQ, um, so that you can yes. add that to the website uh, because yeah, she's part of the interview and I'm part of various yes. uh, important projects. So artistic yes. collaboration and is spreading all over the world. Um, and yes. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Um, so oh. I'll Sorry, probably need to get, get myself another uh, cup of tea here. So my day started fairly early as a result of what, this. <laughs> what, what, what time is it for you right there? Just to give people uh, it's, a um, 10, 10, 15 in the morning here. So Right. So you started well before 8 a.m. then. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So so do you so do you want to say good well for us it's good night. Do you want to say good good day and go off or do you want to come back? Like Yeah. Totally um, I, what's the uh schedule there with this space? So I'm now in sort of unfamiliar yeah. territory. <laughs> <laughs> That's good though. That's good. Um so this this space is um, one that I mean we we were just going to do this space until like for about an hour, but we started to get lots of people coming in, and um, then we blended the spaces. So this is what happens. Um, but our next space at eight o'clock will be the poetry space. So I'm um, I'm I'm going to suggest that um, like so I mean it's kind of real green horse and me. Um, uh, that can, I mean, Maddie's here too. Like we, we probably should close this one out. Um, I mean, for my own sanity in about mm -hmm. like 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much everyone for being here. Like it might be hopefully, but also maybe half an hour, an hour later, we, we, we shall record the poetry space. And like I say, I'm still on site in Newcastle. Yeah. The, the Millennium Bridge. Yeah. So, those joining, we will send those links out, um, but also to your own. Um, this will continue this conversation and this this discussion of what it means to be a community. Mm -hmm. And I truly give this in my heart and soul that beyond the conference to everybody here, mm -hmm. you know, if we keep talking about intersectionality and being proudly autistic and neurodivergent mm -hmm. in the face of any challenges we face or backlash. We want to be here and provide the start of a community that will transcend, you know, merely, merely um, conversation as well. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to build upon that, that what we're basically implementing is this philosophical concept, philosophical concept of authenticity. And that means that as many of us multiply across the globe, we can continue to build and also to be open about mental health care, mm -hmm. about how you feel about that, about how mm -hmm. people need support at different times. I want to empathize that, mm -hmm. that it's okay if people are, you know, struggling, whatever emotion this, this month brings, it's okay to take time out, but also to build any art and poetry and philosophy. Um, and if we aren't always at the exact times, I hope you can all understand that yep. it's through sensory processing. And, you know, Karen building that as well, that what what Karen has done, this this monumental force of, of, of being around internationally, it's, it's, you know, pass it on, pass on this 
um, philosophy of emancipation and, and shared kind of love and trust because that's what we want from people. Mm -hmm. It's not to just hold that power, it's to share love mm -hmm. and power in a respectful and consensual way. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say that, you know, um, sitting here looking at the river in Newcastle right now, um, you're, you're all capable of so many amazing things. And even if you're listening, just just being there and being present and being true and authentic, that makes a big impact. And I can feel you all here mm -hmm. in that. I really can. So, so yeah, to yawn, we will catch up in the future. And to mm -hmm. Karen, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep building this, mm -hmm. and we all will for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, Maddie, you know what I would love if you could just to sort of round out the evening while you're there. Could you take? Could you do one of those like uh, I'm Maddie, existential artist, and I'm here at such and such, and 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 a spoken word to end well. Totally. And tweet it and tweet yeah and tweet it out so that the world can see that like they've done it there and Aberdeen because I know Marion McLaughlin who's um the um founder and C I, I think she goes by CEO of uh Autis Autism Understanding Scotland uh they pushed for the um oh gosh Aberdeen what was it in Aberdeen that's going to be lit up Right. Yeah, yeah, I, I've got that all prepared to be fair. I had some friends coming down, they've took some shots. Yeah. Um, some photos, I didn't mean shots in different ways. I could not possibly comment, obviously, very professional as we are. Um, but yes, um, it, it will all be there to share out those photos near the bridge and literally anything with gold infinity and also different colours, anything away from blue. Sure. You know, anything that supports human rights users for daughters and speaks, which yeah. they are, yeah. we will continue to amplify that that is not the way forward. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll share that, that piece now, if you'd like, uh, Karen, before the poetry stays later. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so oh, yeah. and you, I think... Uh, you're going to say something, one sec. Yeah. So uh, this was amazing, fantastic, and, and Matty, uh, what you've done <laughs> is putting a, a fantastic, I think, angle oh, on things. So I'll oh. hand, hand over to you in, in, a, in a minute. I just wanted to thank everyone here who um, attended um, and uh, yeah, encourage all of us to come together exactly as you were saying. We need to support each other, um, uh, collaborate, share ideas, learn from each other. That's uh, so important. And the support, mutual support needs to be very practical. So I'm gonna sign off now because I need to contact a few people who are really important, uh, who need uh, some support. So mm -hmm, I'll mm -hmm. um, attend to those and okay. I'll entrust you to yeah, do further spaces. And I'm, yeah, as Karen is saying, I'm only one, a message away uh we can always yeah we'll, we'll pick up the thread very soon thank you very much for everything thank you so much appreciate it